Moving on to 10.2 arithmetic sequences and series. Um, okay, guys, we've seen this in Algebra 1 a little bit. Uh, we saw a little bit of this in the first lesson. Uh, but now we're going to get a little specific here with these arithmetic sequences uh, and be able to sum a series as well. So um, how do we add up all of the numbers that are in a particular sequence? All right, how do we do that fast and efficiently? That's what we're going to look at today as part of our lesson. So here we go. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence. So, um, first of all, an arithmetic sequence, each time we're adding something, right? So repeated addition, we know that repeated addition in math is another way to, to do repeated addition is to multiply. Okay, so, um, you know, if you have a term, if you have a, a, a sequence that's like, I don't know, let's just make it simple three let's just make let's just say that we're adding two every time so arithmetic means that we're adding or subtracting a common number so let's just say we're adding two so it'd be three five seven nine okay so to find the nth term what that means today is like find an unknown an unknown term um the nth term you know we could say what happens if n is equal to 27 what that means is Find me the 27th term in this sequence. And instead of writing out 27 terms, I'm going to teach you how to how to do that simply with an equation. Okay, so um, we know each time here that we're adding two. All right, so we're adding two each time. That is known as the common difference. All right, so the common difference is we're adding two repeatedly. We know from previous math that repeated addition is simply multiplication, right? That's all it is. So what we're going to do, what we're doing here really, is we're taking the previous term, okay? Previous term is always denoted by n minus 1. n is just an unknown term. It's the previous one of those, so we're subtracting 1. Okay, so we're going to take n minus 1, the previous term, and we're going to multiply it by the common difference, which is 2. That's how we'll always find the, you know, the term that we're on. With one exception, you know, this might work, but let's just try this. If this, if we said that the, you know, a sub n is equal to just this, let's just see if this works. You know, if we said the first term here, let's just, let's just try out the first term. The first term in this case is 3. So if I plugged a 3 in there, notice what would happen. You know, you would get... Uh, a sub 1, the first term, is equal to um, 1 minus 1. Okay, n is just the term that we're on. 1 minus 1 times 2. So does 3 equal 1 minus 1 times 2? Well, in this case, that would come out to 0. So it doesn't. Okay, so we're missing something here. Um, let's just see what we're missing. So what happens if we tried to find the second term? That's the, that's the five in this case. So if we said a sub two uh, is equal to, that means the second term is equal to two minus one times two, let's just see what that would come out to. Uh, that would come out to one times two. So that means the second term would have to be two. So notice the first one was off by three Okay, the second one was off by three. All right, the missing piece in this equation is the first term. Okay, so not to confuse you here, but this is very crucial to our nth term equation for an arithmetic sequence for today. But we also need the first term to know where we start. So this is the pattern, right? But we also need to know the first term. All right, so if we have those two things, we can come up with an equation now. So if we add in the first term to these, it's going to make start making sense, right? Okay, so here's the nth term equation that you need to make sure you get into your notes. The nth term is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So uh, we can call that d. This is what we're going to use today. In this particular case, the first term a sub 1 was 3. Okay, n is just the number of term that we're looking for. d is the common difference. The difference between them is this guy. Okay, so that's the d. So now if I wanted to find the 27th term, it would be pretty simple. I would just say, okay, a sub 27, which means 27th term is equal to 3, the first term, plus uh, 27, 27th term, minus 1, 
times 2. Okay, and I'm not going to do that out there, but uh, you could do that pretty simply there. 26 times 2 plus 3 will give you the 27th term in the sequence. Um, okay, so that's what we're doing today, you guys. That's part of the first part of what we're doing today. So let's just do some, uh, e some examples here. So example 1, for this one we have... Um, so if we wanted to find the nth term here, a sub n is equal to the first term, negative 4, plus n minus 1. So this will be 9 minus 1 times the common difference, which is 6. Okay, so if I do that, I get uh, this is negative 4 plus 8 times 6. Okay, that's equal to 48. 48 minus 4 is equal to 44. So the... Um, the you know, it says find the nth term, but really they give you n. So in this case, the ninth term is equal to 44. All right, let's look at 1b. Actually, for 1b, um, I'm going to have you guys figure this out. We're solving for a20. Okay, so a20 is equal to the first term, which is 15, plus the n minus 1. Well, that's going to be 20 minus 1 times the common difference is negative 8. Okay, so this is equal to 15 plus 19 times negative 8. All right, when I do that out, I get uh, that the 20th term is equal to uh, negative 137. So hopefully you were able to get that. Example 2 says write equations for the nth term. Okay, so if, I, if I'm going to write an equation for this, I need the pieces for this, right? I need some p important pieces. I need this guy and this guy. Uh, it can be in terms of n, because we're writing an nth term equation. So if I have this and I have this, I'm golden. So here, for 2a, I know that my a1 is 12. So I can say, okay, the, a, the nth term is equal to 12, plus I don't know what term I'm looking for, so it's going to stay in, n minus 1. And then we have to figure out what the common difference is. So the common difference here is negative 9, right? So negative 9 is what's happening each time. So if I put a negative 9 here, um, you know, typically I would say it would be okay to leave it like this, but they want you to simplify this out for today. So if we simplify this out, we get a sub n is equal to, this will be 12. If I distribute this out to both pieces here, this would be minus 9n plus 9. Okay, so the a sub n is equal to negative 9n, if you want to put it in like linear form, because these will be lines. Uh, negative 9n, uh, let's see here, if you add those together, I get plus 21. All right, go ahead and try 2b out on your own. Notice that they give you a 6 here. Okay, so you're going to have to, maybe I should do this with you guys, actually. You're going to have to find a sub 1 if the common difference is equal to 8. So if I, if I just plug it in, first of all, for a sub 6, we know that that's equal to a sub 1 plus uh, 6 minus 1, because this is the 6th term, so n is 6 in this case, um, times d, which is 8. And I actually know that a sub 6 is equal to 12, so I'm actually going to do a little simplification here. I can substitute this 12 in for the sixth term, right? So I can say 12 is equal to the first term plus 5 times 8. The 5 came from right there. Okay, so this 12 is equal to a sub 1 plus 40. If I subtract 40 from both sides here, I get... Um, let's just make sure here. So this a sub 1 is equal to... Uh, so 12 minus 40 is equal to negative 28. Okay, so now that I have a sub 1, now you can you can fill this out and figure out the nth term equation, right? So a sub n would be equal to negative 28, that's your a sub 1, plus n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 8. If we do a little simplifying there, we get a sub n is equal to if I distribute this out and rewrite this into uh, um, slope-intercept form, uh, y equals mx plus b, I can, I can um, do that here and I have 8n is minus 8 minus 28. 
which is equal to 8 in minus 36. And that is your nth term equation. So that one's a little bit more involved because you had to find a sub 1, right? Um, by plugging in what you knew. All right, so you'll have a couple like that. Now, the arithmetic means is the term between any two non-consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. So to find the term in between two non-consecutive terms, you can determine the number of terms, find D by plugging in you know, the missing pieces, and then use your D value to find the missing terms in between. So it says here to find the five arithmetic means between negative 18 and 36. All right, so we're simply gonna just follow our steps, okay? So step one is um, since there are five terms in between, we're gonna determine the number of terms in, okay? So if there's five in between here, the five in between, we have five plus these two. So we actually have seven, right? So n is equal to seven, okay? We can find d by plugging in the first term, the nth term, and using our n, right? So check it out. In order to do that, we can say, okay, there's seven terms total, right? So a7 is equal to a1 plus n minus one times d. Okay, so I can find this d here because I happen to know a7, I happen to know a1, and I happen to know n. So I can plug all that in. So a7 is equal to 36. Okay, so 36 is equal to the first term, negative 18. Again, those are coming from right here and here because I'm finding the things in between that. Negative 18 plus, I know that this has to be, this n value has to be seven because there's five in between two numbers, right? So this will be seven minus one times d. All right, so now it's just a matter of simplifying. So if I add thir uh, 18 to both sides, 36 plus 18 gives me 54. Okay, so I just moved that over. 54 is equal to, seven minus one is just six, so this is 6d. Now I can take 54 and divide that by six and we get nine, so d is equal to nine. Okay, that is a crucial piece of information here. So now what we need to do is, we need to simply add nine to negative 18 repeatedly. So we have negative 18, that's the first thing that was given, but they're, they're asking us for the five in between. Okay, so if I add nine to negative 19, I'm at negative nine, then I'm at zero, then I'm at nine, then I'm at 18, and then I'm at 27. So this is your answer that they're looking for, and then it ends with 36. Okay, so simply follow these steps. You, you plug in what you know, plug in what you know, find D, and then use